welcome to the show and thank you so much for listening. Do you kind of feel like things are just going really fast right now and like something's on the horizon, but you can't tell what it is? This is something that I've been hearing from many of my clients, from many of my friends, and there's just a vibe in the air that change is coming and there is something stirring. A lot of people are experiencing this in their finances and obviously topics like inflation are a really big deal right now and and really up in economic news and forecasts. And at the same time, there's a sense that something else is blossoming and evolving right now. I uh, taught last week a class called The Five Keys to Financial Freedom in Your Astrology Chart, and the on-demand version will be available shortly. But we had such incredible conversations about the aspects of our chart that relate to finances. And we touched on some of these themes that we're, that I'm mentioning right now, which is you know, where are we going and how can we best be prepared for where we're going? And I think the most important thing is that we want to stay out of fear. And so I am, you know, I aim to help you experience your power to make decisions in your life and to know that even though things are circumstances are happening outside in culture or in your communities or in the government or in your job that you can find meaning in some of what's happening and use the events of your life to catalyze change to take you to where you desire to be. And so with that said, I've been unpacking Saturn, planetary Saturn. Now, Saturn is one of those planets that when people even just know a little bit about astrology and you say Saturn, Saturn return, Saturn, the people start, you know, tightening up their muscles, clenching their jaws, bracing themselves for something hard. But I want to help you meet Saturn and get to know the Saturn in your chart so that anytime one of your limitations appears or anytime you find yourself stuck in a rut or in a pattern where you're just not moving forward, then you have a language to work with to understand your Saturn needs, your Saturn wants, and to find a way to mediate that influence in your life. So today's episode is all about about Saturn. And if you are between the ages of 28 and 30, between 44 and 46, or between 57 and 60, you really want to listen to this episode. And if you have friends or family members who are in those ages, you want to send them a copy of this. You want to pass this episode along because there is some good stuff here that I wish I had when I was at that pivotal Saturn return or when I was in my Saturn opposition just a few years ago. And I, I've walked with so many clients going through different Saturn evolutions that I have come to really respect and love Saturn. And if you don't know anything about astrology and you're listening because you know want uh, some kind of insight or you want to be inspired in some way, you don't have to know anything about your own natal Saturn to be able to connect to some of the overarching topics that we're going to talk about today. And really, when we're talking about Saturn, we're talking about what are we dedicated to? What is our work? And how do those perceived limitations in our lives relate to our purpose. Some of those challenges that we face, some of our Achilles heels, if you will, some of the biggest setbacks in our lives actually become the growth edge that we have to move into in order to live more fulfilling and purposeful lives. Saturn teaches that. Saturn also relates to our fears. And, you know, what we uh, talk ourselves out of and why we talk ourselves out of important things, things that we really, really want. And when we are setting goals, when we are creating a trajectory forward and, and identifying where we want to be in our lives, we have to move through Saturn's hurdles. And last week, so this whole topic came to me and I was inspired to 
talk to you about it today because last week in our five keys of financial freedom in your astrology chart, we spent a lot of time talking about Saturn. And there were these incredible aha moments that I saw in some of the uh, participants. They, it was in the, it was in the chat, in the comments. People emailed me afterward. Understanding our Saturn can change our lives for the better. It gives the power back to you and takes it away from those mean teachers that you had in grade school, from the parent who left you when you were a child and it felt like abandonment, um, from the bully in school or the sibling who was mean. Understanding your Saturn, loving your Saturn, working with your Saturn allows you to take your power back from those situations and from those memories and those traumatic events. And it allows you to dedicate yourself to a path forward. So the format for today is that we're going to talk about Saturn, and then we're going to talk about the Saturn stages, which happen about every seven years. And so if you're one of those people who believe that every seven years you go through a physical change or something shifts, you're right, and there's a Saturn transit associated with that. So we're going to talk about those pivotal Saturn transits at seven and a half, 14 to 15, at 28, roughly 28 to 30. We're going to talk about those big Saturn milestones and what they signify. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Saturn retrograde, which happens on June 29th. And Saturn goes retrograde for several months. And so it will be going direct. That retrograde period is from uh, June 29th to November 15th. And so we are going to, we're going to unpack what that Saturn retrograde period means for us in our individual lives, as well as for the structures of society. Because Saturn loves structure and it loves society. It wants everything to be ordered and rule-based. So we're going to talk about some of those rules. We're going to talk about that in relation to the Supreme Court and to the election in the U.S. And so then we'll kind of taper it back and we'll bring it back home to you and talk about how you can understand your Saturn better, look at your Saturn, and navigate your Saturn transits. So that is our plan for today. I'm so excited. So let's get started. So so all planets in our solar system are associated with mythological characters. And these characters give us a storyline that has a symbolic resonance with the planet. And these were developed in ancient times. um, And so Saturn, the story of Saturn is that Saturn was the god, the, the supreme god, the god who oversaw everything. And Saturn was a very jealous god. And he received an oracle message. And the oracle told him that he would have a child who would betray him and overthrow him on the throne. So Saturn wanted to prevent this from happening. He didn't want to lose power. So he swallowed his children. And uh, those children are Juno, Pluto, Uranus. And so so he so Saturn swallowed those children. Now his his wife at the time was pregnant with baby and she had lost all of her other children. Uh, and so she gave birth to the baby in secret, hiding him. And it was Jupiter who she gave birth to. And Jupiter grew up living in hiding to be this benevolent god, to be this overpowering god. And he ended up uh, killing his father, overthrowing his father, saving, rescuing all of his siblings, bringing them out of Saturn's belly. And so Jupiter became the sky god. Then Uranus became... So all planets in our solar system are related to named after different gods and goddesses in the Greek pantheon. Now, the asteroids and the plutoids and dwarf planets have adopted other symbolism, but the ones, the primary planets in our solar solar system are all based on these myths. And Saturn, let's talk about Saturn for a second, because Saturn's a complicated character mythologically. So Saturn was a god in Roman religion, um, in Roman mythology, and he was considered the god of time, the god of dissolution, structure, wealth, agriculture. Saturn deals with everything that creates stability. So the story of Saturn is that Saturn was given a prophetic message that one of his children would overthrow him and take the throne. Saturn loved power. Saturn did not want to give up 
his royalty, his control. And so each time his his wife, uh, Rhea, gave birth to one of the children, he would hold them in his arms and then eat them. And his children that were devoured were Pluto, Neptune, Ceres, Juno, and Vesta. Now, his wife, Rhea, was... Uh, or Opus, the Greek and Roman equivalents, was not happy about this. And she gave birth to Jupiter, and she did not want Jupiter to suffer the same fate as his siblings. And so she hid him. Now, later in his life, Jupiter, knowing about Saturn's uh, behavior, poisoned him. And as Saturn was being poisoned, he regurgitated all of the siblings. And so then Jupiter was able to overthrow him. Jupiter was able to take the throne. And the story continues from there. But what's important about this is that Saturn, the symbolism of Saturn, the, the mythological story of each one of our planets really gives us a depth of meaning and understanding of what the planet is about. And so when we're talking about Saturn in our charts or Saturn in astrology, what we are talking about is the part of us that doesn't want to let go of control. The part of us that wants things to be a certain way and doesn't want to be flexible to consider other options. And when you think about any limiting belief that you have, I'm sure you can pull one up from the recesses of your subconscious, or you could probably know those limiting thoughts because they're the ones that you say over and over again, and you find yourself saying in conversations, and you don't even realize that those are limitations or that those are limiting beliefs because they've become so true for you. And one common one that I hear very often is there just aren't any great men, single men over 30. You know, that's one I hear from many of my single clients, female clients. You can also hear things like it's really hard to break in to the music industry or it's impossible to become an actor. You have to you have to be lucky to be an actor or uh, money is hard. I'm not going to make money if I don't work hard. Those those that voice of um, of that Debbie Downer voice inside of us, that voice is are Saturn at work. Saturn is very protective. Again, it wants to have control. It wants to have ownership over our path to success. And it doesn't want us to get involved in anything that's risky or anything that could throw us off of our power, make us more vulnerable, or make us lose our sense of inner authority. So Saturn can be misunderstood in astrology. But it's incredibly powerful. And when we understand the way our natal Saturn shapes our perceptions and shapes our limitations, then we can begin the process of moving beyond them and really having more authority over the direction in our lives. So I want to break down some just basics about Saturn in your chart. I talked about the voice of Saturn because I, I think I, you know, I'm one of those people who thinks in dialogue. And so I have that inner voice, that inner narrator that goes on. And, and so I know the voice of my Saturn and I can probably hear the voice of your Saturn too. And we'll get to that in just a second. But just painting some broad brushstrokes, Saturn is known as the taskmaster of our chart. It's the planetary judge. It's the planetary teacher. It's the teacher, not the one who's like, great job, you're doing it, keep going. It's the teacher who says, you know, Friday morning, you're getting a pop quiz. And if you don't pass this pop quiz, you're going to get an automatic B in the class. If you don't do it, or you can do extra credit. But the extra credit has to be turned in at eight o'clock on Monday, you know, so it's that influence. Saturn represents structure. It represents discipline. It's responsibility. Saturn is our boundaries. And it's not necessarily how we protect our boundaries. That's more of Mars's territory, but it's borders. It's walls. It's how comfortable are we with letting people into our emotional hearts? How, how comfortable are we letting people into our homes? It's how risk averse are we? And Saturn's energy is all about protection and it's protecting our own inner authority. Saturn is that part of us that wants to be the parent, that wants to be the responsible one. At the heart of all things Saturn is really the sense of what is just, what is fair, what are the rules, and what am I dedicated to? So those two things. There are 
three different classifications of planets. Personal planets are the planets, and include we can include the luminaries in here too, the sun and the moon. So the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. These are the planets that relate to our everyday lives, our day-to-day experiences. The outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, are those transpersonal planets. They're the planets that relate to what waves of change are rippling out in the culture, in the memosphere, what are those evolutionary cultural shifts that we are a part of? Saturn and Jupiter are the social planets. They are the planets that bridge those cultural big picture changes, the revolutions that are taking place. They bridge those with our daily experience. And usually our Saturn influence represents the way that our early caregivers, our teachers, our parents, the people who help shape our sense of identity and our sense of what's right and wrong, Saturn represents the way those early caregivers interpreted and experienced those larger global shifts and how they taught us rules and beliefs based on what they were experiencing being a part of that period of time, that culture. So for example, you know, those who have parents who were coming of age in the 60s during that Uranus-Pluto conjunction during that time of revolution, their entire worldviews were shifting from that baby, that older uh, generation, you know, the, the depression era generation to something completely new. And there was a lot about free love. There was a lot about drug culture. There was a lot about uh, civil rights, different aspects of, of justice. And there was a lot of big cultural opening happening at that time. And so the children who were born during that period were mixed up in all of this tumultuous change. And so they are sitting with, as adults, they're sitting with these beliefs of, you know, what does it mean to live in a just society? Does it feel safe? And so their cultural shifts that they've experienced then influence their own children and how they raise their children and the beliefs and the rules and the order that they pass on to their children. So Saturn's energy is about helping us grow through hard work, through perseverance. Saturn is our work and it's our karmic work. It's the inner emotional growth edge that we have to cross, but it can also relate to our career and to what we do. But Saturn, because it relates to the rules and the laws, and it actually even relates to law enforcement, if we look at it more on a mundane level or more on just an outside of a personal level, Saturn relates to how we you know, create law and order. It's the legislative process. And Saturn is exalted, meaning it's in a sign that it loves in Libra, which is the sign of justice. So it's weighing those scales of what's right and what's wrong. That Saturn at its highest octave, it is saying... This is fair. This is balanced. This is not. Saturn shows us what we are afraid of. It shows us the unlived lives of our parents because Saturn so deeply relates to what our parents didn't fulfill in their own lives and how we develop a sense of ego identity based on our family of origin, based on the rules and the structures that were in place for us in our lives. So I want to take a moment and talk about the Saturn cycle. I think to understand Saturn's influence in our lives and in our charts, it's best to look at the Saturn cycle. Many people talk about the Saturn return, and this is a significant astrological event that happens approximately every 29 and a half years when Saturn returns to the same position it was at the time of your birth. So right before your 30th birthday, right before your 60th birthday, you are generally having your Saturn return. Sometimes it can be anywhere really between the ages of 27 and 30 or between the ages of 58 to 60 depending on how fast or slow your Saturn is moving. And then there's a third Saturn return for those people who are just about to turn 90. And this is a pivotal turning point too that I see in some of my clients. I've only worked with a few, had the privilege of working with a few clients who are doing it in a way that orients themselves more to their personal needs 
and less to the influence that they want to have out in the world. And for women, it's slightly different. But both for anyone going through a Saturn return, second Saturn return, there is this question of what's next? What's my next chapter? And it's a chapter that needs to have more meaning, more personal fulfillment for that age. And wow, it is a powerful, powerful time. Usually our Saturn return is marked by significant life changes. And a lot of times there are life challenges, such as career changes, marriage, divorce, relocations. It's a time when we are really called to step into our sense of maturity. It's, I think of it as like the adulting transit. And the first Saturn return is a little bit different than the second Saturn return. In that first Saturn return, we are really moving away from the identities and the sense of who we are based on who we were taught to be from our early caregivers and from our childhood parents in particular. And so a lot of our Saturn return stuff is about us taking the reins of our lives and moving it in a new direction. So the first Saturn return is about building structures. It is about saying these are the beliefs. These are the rules. These are the ways that I was taught to be in the world and to be in my professional world. And this is what I was taught structure is based on. The Saturn return first one is, but this is what I dedicated to now. This is what I believe now for myself. So a lot of people will go through major identity changes during their Saturn return. The second Saturn return at 58 to 60 is a little bit different. It is, I have been living this adult life for almost 30 years, and I've been dedicating myself to other people, to my career, to building the structure of my home, my family, my career path. I have created these beams of support that allow me to live my life. And everything is in question. This transit is different for males and for females in my experience, and even different for those who are non-binary or those who are trans, and especially those who come out as trans right around that second Saturn return. That is like one of those miraculous turning points that I have seen a couple of times, not a lot. And it's usually marked with this real ownership of who they are. So I want to talk about it for women. And I'm primarily talking about cisgender women and both in heterosexual relationships, also in who identify as queer. But for women, this is one of the most powerful transits that they go through. And I love walking with clients through this transit because what happens is so much of what we are enculturated to be is relational, is there for everybody else. You know, we are taking care of usually our children and our parents right around that time, our aging parents. And the second Saturn return is often a time when kids are leaving the nest, when the parents are transitioning or have transitioned. And it's a time when many women get to look at themselves and say, what do I want? Who do I want to become? And it is a time when you're in the Saturn return, it's challenging. You feel really compressed. It's like, ah, the world is, you know, I feel stuck. I don't know where I'm going. But once you get to the other side of that uh, Saturn return, then you are in a new 30-year chapter. And it is a time of no nonsense, own your power, really go in the direction that you most want to go. And a lot of women recreate themselves after that time and start new career paths. They start businesses. They write books. They sell their businesses. There's a lot of life that you get to experience and get to live into on the other Saturn return. For men, and primarily cisgender men, this is different because for men, this transit is all about connecting with others. It's like the structure that you've built is really your internal structure. It is for many men who were, who I've worked with and walked with this, that much of their life focus has been about building their career and family and being the father figure, being, you know, the partner. And usually it's a very self-directed path. And there's a sense of having to, to stay within the lines and follow the rules. The second Saturn return for men is often a time when they say, you know what? I think I want to focus on more of my personal life. I don't want to work so hard. Or I want to work in a way that's more meaningful. 
So if they've been working a corporate job or have been a CEO or a executive with a company, they might transition and start to think about how they can do more volunteer work or how they can coach their son's little league or you know how they can start to retire. And so for a lot of men, there's like a toning down of energy and a redirection of energy. And yes, they're still making choices. They're still taking the reins of their, their lives, but they're doing it in a slightly different way. And then for anyone who is non-binary, who is transgender, it's going to have a similar effect. And often it is marked with, you know, finding out how they can own their identity. And again, service, taking the reins of our lives, those are all themes that we see with the Saturn return. So the Saturn return is a concept that a lot of people know about, thanks to technology and astrology and in the, the merge of those two. But did you know that every seven and a half years, you're in a Saturn transit and Saturn is making what we call a hard aspect to your natal Saturn. And if we think about this developmentally, uh, you know, Saturn changes signs every two and a half years, and it moves into very specific relationships with our natal Saturn. So every seven and a half years, we are going through re-evaluation of what are those identities that we hold on to? What are the beliefs and the rules that run our lives? What is our sense of self based on the feedback that we receive from other people and based on what we've come to accept about ourselves in those early years of our lives. So seven and a half to eight and a half is that first Saturn transit that paves the way for all other Saturn transits. And if you think about what's happening at seven and a half, often this is a growth edge. When you're realizing that, you know, that you're talented, that you're gifted in certain things, you're getting, you understand what you're rewarded for, what you're punished for. And so you have a sense of who you are in relation to how good or bad you are, how talented you are at certain subjects and others. So that seven and a half period, you know, it's second grade in many places, or, you know, I think for me, I was in second grade during that time. And it's one of those times when you really do have that first sense of this is who I am. There's a correspondence with the way the ego is developed. And all of our Saturn limiting beliefs, all of our Saturn challenges, a lot of those come from that period in our lives. So anytime we face a hurdle, we want to look back at what was happening at seven and a half. So I'm going to give an example. Sometimes if you were taught, you know, you are not good in math and at seven and a half, you were not doing great in math. You couldn't memorize the multiplication tables and all of those things. And, you know, you were struggling with then at 60, when you're asked to take on a business, then the fear of I'm not good at math or I'm not logical might come up for you. Or when you're in your 20s and you are having to figure out what courses in college, what's your degree and your major, where are you going with, you know, with your life? And this happens right around 21 years old, 21 and a half. And so all of our Saturn decisions stem back to that pivotal time at seven and a half years old. Then at 14 and a half, 15 years old, we go into the Saturn opposition. And everyone is going through this at the same time. So if you have parents who are adolescents and teenagers and you're watching them go through this, then pay attention. So the Saturn opposition is that entry into adolescence. And so if Saturn is the rules that govern your life, based on your early caregivers, your teachers, your parents, then at 14 and a half, 15 years old, when that Saturn opposition comes, then you start questioning, is this true for me? And you go into that rebellious period of like, I am going to reject this. I'm going to go in a new way. I'm going to, you know, branch out a little bit and do my own thing. And this might be a time also when you're developing, you know, clubs and the groups that you're in in school, you might be getting understanding what you're excelling at or what you are not doing well in your learning environment. And you're also thinking about what kind of extracurricular activities you're doing. And so your Saturn 
is blossoming open in a new way, but there's a lot of tension with any kind of Saturn square or opposition. These times that we're talking about developmentally are times where there could be like weird health challenges coming up. There, you know, could be fights with friends. Like you have losses at the same time you are creating a path forward for yourself, dedicating yourself to what you most desire, what your heart's hungry for. So the same transit repeats itself right around 45 years old. And this is the Saturn opposition. And the Saturn opposition is what I think of as the midlife crisis. It is the crisis where you realize all the limitations of age and of the life that you've built in the 15 years since your Saturn return. And so you're face to face with the reality. This is a Saturn word, the reality of what is. And so this is a time when our dreams can die or when we can lose hope and faith. And it's also a time when we can feel like I'm not doing anything that's important. I don't feel any excitement or enthusiasm. And so this can be a real turning point. And what's interesting too is right around this time, our hormones are changing as well. No matter what gender you identify, there are fluctuations that are taking place with age, with hormones, with the body that are also reinforcing some of this sense of, I am not the young person that I was. And we're watching the younger generations come of age and we're watching them on social media and how many of us are learning skincare tips from Gen Zers. Thank you. Uh, you know, and, and so we're wondering like, am I relevant anymore? Now this transit lasts about a year and it's important that anytime we're on at a at one of those pivotal Saturn crossroads, we are not just making decisions for the moment. We're making decisions that last seven years, or in the case of the Saturn opposition, 14 years until that next Saturn return. Saturn is a timekeeper. Saturn tells us what is most important. Here's the thing. Here's my secret. Saturn is the planet of perceived limitations. And I love this concept. This came from reading Business Astrology by Georgia Stathis, and an uh, excellent book if you if you want to check it out. But, you know, she talks about how Saturn was the outermost planet that we could see in the solar system, that the ancients could see without a telescope. And so Saturn represented the edge of the universe for the ancients, the very boundary of our solar system. And what we know now is that thanks to technology, there are so many planets. There's a whole universes and galaxies outside of Saturn's orbit. And so Saturn represents kind of the threshold guardian that stops us anytime we are about to do something bold and brave, anytime we're about to follow a dream or, you know, follow our inspiration or our passion. Saturn is the, the voice of the naysayer that says, do you really want to do that? Is that really safe? But Saturn is our perceived limitations, which means that if we can find a way to negotiate with our inner Saturn, then Saturn becomes a helper. Saturn says, okay, you want to do this? I'm going to open the door for you. I'm going to give you the structure to follow. Let's create a plan. Let's discipline yourself. You want to run a race? Excellent. You can't just sign up for a race and expect to win. You've got to do a training program. Saturn teaches us what we need to do to reach our goals. If you know your Saturn sign, your Saturn sign keywords tell you what to move toward. If you know your Saturn house, that tells you the area of your life to create stability, structure, to prioritize in order to nurture your root system and help you to achieve your desires. I'm going to give you a great example that I love. And anyone who's taken my classes knows this example and knows I love using it. So Oprah has her Saturn in Scorpio. And her and Scorpio rules things like psychology, uh, sexuality, the transformative processes of healing and taboo subjects, things like dying, things like sexual experiences, the, the subjects that we don't want to talk about. And when, when Oprah started to host her talk show and she started to bring on the uh, guests who were talking about those taboo subjects, her show reached whole new levels of success. And then she was the one to introduce Dr. Phil to everyone and started to really bring psychology out into the mainstream. So Oprah 
could have hidden her own experiences uh, or she could have stayed away from those subjects. But would she have been as successful? The sat- Saturn is the key to everything you want and everything you desire. It is the key to your success. Now, you might be listening to this and thinking, I don't know where my Saturn is. I don't know what you're talking about, Rachel. There are lots of ways to look at where your Saturn is. And you can go to astro.com. You can go to my website, rachellangastrologer.com. You can get free charts there. You can also, there are so many apps now that are available. Time Passages has a great one. Time Nomad is a good one. Cafe Astrology is really helpful. So there are so many resources for you to get to know your Saturn and to fall in love with with your Saturn. If you are in one of those Saturn turning points, then and one of the ages where Saturn is really active in your chart, then this is a time when you probably feel a real strong sense of urgency. Like I have to do, I have to make decisions right now and everything is serious and I need to get married and I need to build a business and I need to do this. And, and so take a deep breath. You don't have to. You don't have to take any action at this time. But it's important to dedicate yourself to really making choices even if it's going to take some time to unfold a plan or to discipline yourself and take a step-by-step journey, you don't have to feel that pressure. Remember, Saturn is like that teacher that wants to give you a pop quiz. And a lot of times the pressure we feel is like that pop quiz. But the more we can quiet ourselves, the more we can see our paths unfolding over a period of time, the more we can give ourselves spaciousness around the decisions that we're making during those Saturn periods, the more Saturn rewards our efforts with an unfolding of the plan. Saturn wants our discipline and it wants our attention. A couple of key words with Saturn are perseverance and dedication. And so Saturn, we're all going to reach our Saturn goals and objectives are identified by where Saturn is in our charts. So the sign and the house. At the risk of making this a longer episode than usual, I'm going to go through the signs just real quickly. So Aries, for you, it's about confidence. It's about knowing that you can do it on your own and that you really can pioneer change. It's a lot about your own independence. For Taurus, it's recognizing that you have stability and that you don't have to fear losing your resources, being poor, that you don't have to be in fear of making wrong financial decisions. Also, for Saturn and Taurus, there's a lot about being in a body and enjoying the all that's good about being in a body, beauty, art, design, nature. And so allowing yourself to take time to smell the roses. For Gemini, for you, it's all in appreciating how you learn, take in information, and how you communicate. So a lot of people with Saturn and Gemini are writers or you know, work in a marketing capacity or doing something where you're communicating, where you're expressing ideas out in the public realm. And there can be a lot of self-consciousness about the way you use words or the way you express yourselves. And so you know that you're here to understand the value of how to put words together to express your heart, your ideas. For Saturn in Cancer, Saturn in Cancer is about home and finding home within yourself. It's also about understanding the ways in which you might hold back, not allowing nurturing to come in, or the ways in which you might, you know, sort of resist nurturing or caring for others. It can be like wanting to be out in the world and not wanting to be identified with home and family and with your personal life. Or it could be that it's kind of scary to think about owning property or building a home, but ultimately that is what you're here to learn and that's what you're here to experience. Saturn and Leo is often a love-hate relationship with being seen, with being visible, with expressing yourself. And this can be one of those aspects, those Saturn aspects that is like you have to do your chores before you can play to where anything frivolous or playful can you get messages early on about how you shouldn't waste your time. And so there can be a lot tied in here about creativity, uh, 
about self-worth, about confidence, and a lot about that tied into the ways in which you feel obligated to other people and at the limit of your own creative expression. But you are here to actually to break those boundaries open, to teach others how to play, perform, to be in the spotlight in some ways, and to lead as well. Saturn in Virgo. This is a Saturn placement that emphasizes getting all the details together and ritual, everyday practices and rituals. And so there is an element of wanting to bring order to chaos, wanting to take control of things. And sometimes I think this can be a real expressive Saturn placement that relates to how we communicate and analyze things that are coming in. This could be a very service-oriented placement where you feel like I have to give back. It is important for me to do something that is meaningful and that matters to make a contribution. Sometimes this placement can come with self-sacrifice or with being very chaotic or disorganized and needing to have someone else to come in and take care of that for you. But ultimately, you are here to learn how to build systems and how to bring your magical and creative uh, processes into a disciplined approach in your everyday life without sacrificing. Saturn and Leo. I'm sorry, Libra. Saturn in Libra. Saturn in Libra is a placement that is oriented toward justice and fairness and also relationships. And so Saturn in Libra can be a real pull toward wanting to be in a committed, stable partnership, an equal partnership. Sometimes one of the challenges with that, though, is that relationships can feel like hard work, where you put too much emphasis on them and they don't feel like they're fluid. But ultimately, this is one of the things that you're here to learn is how to collaborate, how to be with other people and not lose yourself. Saturn in Le Libra also can be a real attention to public policy, law, the ways that laws are made, mediation, um, the legal profession. And one risk that I see with Saturn and Libra is that you can really be a scorekeeper. Like I did this and you did this. And so we want to give some more flexibility to the ways that we think about fairness and balance. Saturn and Scorpio. This is a placement that is oriented toward going deep and exploring things that are taboo subjects, that are things that are in the subconscious realm, exploring things like psychology. And you might have a resistance to having deep conversations. You might be afraid of seeing a therapist or doing your own inner work. You might be afraid of the spiritual realm or delving into some of those hidden aspects of your psyche. But this is ultimately what you came here to learn. And so think of Oprah, let her be your model and template. Also, this is a, a life path that's oriented toward death, toward dying, toward understanding industries related to death, understanding the transformative processes that we go through in our lives through birth and loss. Saturn and Sagittarius, you are here to understand the limits of freedom. What doesn't feel free? You do not, it, you can almost be allergic to routines and to structures and have a real craving for freedom, even though you might feel like if you are free, if you have, don't have a day job, if you don't have, you know, a schedule to keep, then you might be afraid that you're just going to go wild. And often that's not my experience with Saturn and Sagittarius. This is also a philosophical placement where you have very certain rules around what is true and what is not. And it's almost like a black and white, like this is true, this is not true. You held, withheld information, therefore you are lying. And you also have your own ethic that makes integrity and truth-telling primary priorities for you. And sometimes there can be mistrust because of that need for to understand what is and what is at the bottom of things. Also, there can be a fear of flying or a fear of travel or a real draw to travel, but not having the time to do it. This is a placement that I find with people who have international businesses, actually. Now we have Saturn and Capricorn. Saturn loves Capricorn in its own sign there. And Saturn and Capricorn is really having a strong sense of what is right and what is wrong, having an inner wisdom, knowing the rules that you follow. But one of the challenges with it is that you can have expectations that aren't met in other people or that you could be so rigid in the way that you live your life that you're not open to surprises or to changes or that it can influence your relationships. And, and so Saturn in Capricorn is a little bit more risk averse 
It says, I want to know it's safe before I go there. And it can also just need a lot of stability, a lot of structure. It's not going to be as comfortable with chaotic environments, for example. And at the same time, because Saturn is shows us two sides of a coin, it can also be a real resistance to those things. Saturn in Aquarius. You all are the revolutionaries. You are the ones who are opening the minds of your caregivers in childhood. You're opening the minds of culture and you're also oriented toward technology. So Saturn and Aquarius, you can feel like people don't understand me. I'm different. And that's your strong suit because you are made to stand out. You're also connected to groups and organizations And often you find yourself in a leadership role in those groups and organizations. Even when you don't want to be a leader, you just want to play along. This can be one of those placements where you feel a really strong urge to give back, to help others to be in social groups. Or, you know, when Saturn was in Aquarius in the 90s, this is when online chat rooms were started and forums. When Saturn was in Aquarius just recently in 2000, we were all on Zoom working with technology to create communities. Finally, we have Saturn in Pisces. And for you, your Saturn does its work behind the scenes in the mystical realm, in the spiritual realm, in the creative realm. But you probably spend a lot of your time resisting that because you don't want to lose control. You don't want to go into a nebulous world and lose your sense of grounding. But ultimately, this is what you came here to experience. You came here to experience integration of the material and the spiritual. And so Saturn and Pisces can also be just a real pull to service and especially healing professions, healthcare. It can be a real draw to the film industry and to creativity and creative work. You know, your Saturn, you're going through your Saturn return right now. Last year it started, this year it's happening, and then a little bit into next year. And so for you, this is a pivotal time of deciding, am I going to trust my intuition or am I going to trust others? It is how do you deepen your sense of your spiritual awareness? How do you incorporate that into your everyday life? How do you incorporate that into your work, even if you're working in a job that feels like the antithesis of that? And so that is your Saturn uh, mission, should you choose to accept it. Now we venture into the fascinating world of Saturn retrograde. If you have Saturn retrograde in your natal chart, you want to listen to this. And if you don't, then I'm going to tell you why Saturn retrograde is important for you this year. Saturn stations retrograde on June 29th, and it goes retrograde until November 15th. Let me back up just a minute and talk about retrograde planets. When a planet goes retrograde, it's an optical illusion where the planet appears to be moving backwards. And it's not unlike when you're at a stoplight and a car is right next to you and you're going the same approximate speed, but it looks like they're going backwards. That's, you know, on a bigger scale, what's happening to us with these planets. So if you ever look outside in the night sky, when a retrograde planet is visible, you're going to see that planet bigger, shinier, brighter than it is at other times of the year. And that's because it's closer to Earth. And so retrograde planets are, I I personally think of them as because the light is brighter, we feel the influence of that planet stronger. It's like we can't escape it. It's there. When Saturn is retrograde, it is slowing us down and it is turning us inward, inviting us to reflect on our goals, responsibilities, on the structures that we've built for our lives and our relationships too. And wherever Saturn is in our charts, if it's moving through the first house, the second house, the third house, whatever house it is moving in in our charts, that's the area of our lives where we're doing all of this big reflection. And we're also reflecting on the relationships associated with those houses. So the first house is the house of the self and our relationship with the self. It's what is our identity? How do we express ourselves in the world? What do people see when they look at us? A lot of times it is our physical health and our body. In the second house, it is our finances. And Saturn moving through the second house can be one of the most challenging transits for us financially because we have to tighten up. We have to be more careful with how we're spending. Usually we can have more expenses because it's often a time of building our businesses or it's building wealth in new ways. Saturn in the third house is our neighborhoods, our learning, 
And often this is a time when we are taking classes or writing books or teaching something. It's also our relationship with our siblings and with our neighbors and community members, local community members. The fourth house is our family. And often Saturn in the fourth house is a time when we really are nurturing the foundation of our personal lives, those heart connections. It's a time when we are spending more time at home. We're spending more time with our loved ones. And we're really unpacking a lot of those family of origin challenges. Uh, We all have them. And also gifts. And a lot of times we are taking care of family members during that time. Saturn in the fifth house is our relationships with our children. It's also the house that relates to our creativity, our creative expression, our fertility, our playfulness, our games, you know, the sports that we play. It's also the house that relates to the romantic love, the kind of like dating affair, you know, like that type of love and not necessarily the commitment contract related love that we see with marriage in the seventh house. And so a lot of times Saturn in the fifth house is like a get serious transit. It's often a time when we are, you know, we are facing the pressure of what do we want to create? And we're doing everything we can to discipline ourselves to make that happen. Saturn in the sixth house is the house of our day-to-day routines, rituals, It's our health. It's our pets too. It's our coworkers and colleagues. Um, It's our employees. And often when Saturn's in the sixth house, we are working and it might feel like we're not accomplishing much, but we're building a foundation for future success and taking care of our health in the process, understanding the relationship between stress and success. The seventh house is the house that relates to our partnerships, business partnerships, marriage. It's also the house that relates to our uh, clients and people that we work very closely with, those intimate relationships, anyone that we have a contract with. It can also relate to people who are enemies and people who might talk badly about us on social media or you know rant about us to other people. And the eighth house is the house of taxes. It's the house, it's another financial house that relates to the money that we share with our partner and the money that we have through uh, long-term investments, dividends, stocks, uh, bonds. It's like those, it's like the overarching financial aspect of our lives that relates to how we hold wealth and how we receive money. Often when transiting Saturn is in the eighth house, we're doing a lot of cleanup with debt. We're paying, we're getting insurance bills in the mail that are more than they were last year. We're having tax bills that are higher than we expect. And it's a lot of like, all right, we got a clean house in order to make space for new opportunities. The ninth house is the house of travel, higher education, academia. It's the house of our spirituality and our religion. Um, So it's the faith and the beliefs that guide our decisions and our morality. It's also the house that relates to astrology. And the ninth house, it's also the house of our second spouse. Uh, So sometimes those relationships can be influenced as well. The 10th house is the house of our career. It's, but it's our mission. It's what are we called to do and how are we called to be known? That legacy that we lead. The 10th house relates to our, any authority figure in our lives, our boss, or if we're the boss, it relates to our position in power. It relates to anyone that we perceive to be an authority figure. And the 10th house and the fourth house both relate to our parents. So when Saturn's moving through those houses, often we do have a lot more uh, family stuff going on at that time. The 10th house is your, it's authority figures like judges too. So if you're in a court case, this is Saturn in the 10th house says that the judge is going to make you, you do some work and that any kind of legal action might not be easy breezy. When Saturn's in the 10th house, it's a peak point in our career where we have to work hard. And often this is happens once every 29 years. And this is often when we have a major turning point in our career. Then Saturn in the 11th house is our groups, our organizations, our political groups and alliances. It's the house that relates to stepchildren or adopted children. It's also the house of our future dreams and goals. And It's the house of benefactors, too. And so when Saturn's moving through this house, we emphasize what people we want to ally ourselves with. And so relationships can change. Friendships can change. And friendships can also deepen. And then finally, the 12th house. When Saturn's moving through the 12th house, this is a time of personal renewal. 
it's often a time when we are caring for people who are sick or we're spending time in, you know, care facility. The 12th house relates to institutions like hospitals. The 12th house also relates to our large animals like our horses. The 12th house is the house of our spiritual calling. And I love Kay Taylor, who is a friend of mine and just an incredible astrologer, framed it that way for me. If the 10th house is what is our calling, the 12th house is what is the work that we do that fulfills our sense of karmic duty, if you will. The 12th house is also the house of mystical experiences the house of dreams. It is the quiet house that relates to endings. And so Saturn is a, stays in each house for two and a half years. And when Saturn is in the 12th house, it is bringing chapters to a close. So there you go. When Saturn, so think about where Saturn is in your chart, transiting Saturn. Transiting Saturn right now is in the sign of Pisces. So whatever house is ruled by Pisces in your chart, that is where Saturn is blessing. That's where Saturn is making itself known and doing its work. And so this is where the Saturn retrograde period is going to most influence you. Saturn retrograde can feel like a pause button. It's a time when we slow down, when we take stock of our lives and our progress. And it's not uncommon to face delays, to face setbacks or obstacles, to face some of our fears that relate to our limiting beliefs. However, those challenges are opportunities. And if we can move through them, jump over those hurdles, then Saturn gives us a gift at the end. And Saturn's gifts are really good. Saturn loves consequences. And so the consequences for right action, for being in integrity, for staying dedicated are deeper commitments in your relationships, more success and recognition. The consequences for lying, cheating, for, you know, harming other people or harming the planet in an intentional way, the consequences for hiding anything, lying, the consequences for that are usually that you have to come, the truth comes out. And there can be punishment associated with that. So Saturn consequences are all related to what you're doing, to your actions, to your thoughts, to your words. So Saturn transits can be incredibly prosperous, incredibly abundant. They can be times of generosity. They can be times when you're falling in love and getting married. Saturn Venus transits, when Saturn makes an aspect to Venus, I see so many commitments and marriages happening during those transits. And so Saturn retrograde is a four-month period of time where all of this is coming to the forefront. And because Saturn's in Pisces and Saturn and Neptune are doing this dance, this is happening for everyone, not just in our personal charts, but because Saturn and Neptune are dancing together for the next couple of years, there's this real interplay, the dreams that we have and the our hearts calling, which is Neptune, the sense of who am I and what am I here to do with Neptune? What is the fantasy? Uh, and can I make it real? Can I realize the dream that I had back when I was seven and a half? or back when I was 15 during those pivotal Saturn periods. And so there's, you know, this is one of those times when if you've built, I'm going to use a biblical reference here, if you've built a castle in the sand, it's going to fall down. It won't have the structure to support itself. But if you've built a castle on a strong foundation, then the influence of Pisces can help magnetize the influences that you need, the people you need to help you realize your dream. And so this year and next year, Saturn is going to be asking you to define your dreams. And it it won't tell you, but you will be awakened to the ways in which your emotions are related to your guidance system. And anytime you feel uncertain or cloudy or you feel bad or depressed or you just kind of want to escape, then that is a clue, a signal Saturn sending you that, all right, we are focusing all of our, we're dedicating ourselves, we're focusing all of our efforts to something that doesn't feed us, that doesn't reverberate with that true sense of meaning and fulfillment and purpose. Saturn rules things in our culture like healthcare, like the film industry, like water and uh, the way that we hold water, 
dams, for example. And so all of these all uh, vaccines, it rules medicine, it rules drugs and drug recreational drugs, medicinal, medicinal drugs, um, and it also rules the recovery process from addiction. And so all of these are areas of our current global concerns that are in flux. And so these, you know, I know anyone who's working in the film industry right now is feeling the pullback. And as Saturn goes retrograde, we could feel that even more before Saturn shoots forward on the other side. So it wants to clean house. And what it's cleaned house with is really being able to help us to see the ways in which we are not honoring the quote unquote soft skills, how we're not honoring our emotions, our sensitivities, our hearts, our spiritual selves. Saturn retrograde is going to really put a spotlight on the imbalances that we have in our culture around the way that we work and the way that we're compensated and the way that we have that, that integration between the professional life and the life that is outward uh, focused and oriented and the inner life and the inner world that is deep and that wants our attention. So I have given you a lot of information. So let's all take a deep breath. And I'm going to give you a few tips for moving through this Saturn retrograde cycle. And especially on the 29th and July 1st, when this retrograde is stationing. So the first one is take time to look at your vision board or reflect on your goals and to really feel, not with your logical mind, but with your heart. Do I long for this? Do I desire this? Not just would I like this, like is this in alignment with my soul? Really reflect on your goals, on your commitments. Be willing to say no and to let things go. Number two, look around your space, look at your life and identify any unfinished business, anything that you've had responsibility for that you've let go. Because Saturn's going to come back and it's going to remind you, hey, you said you were going to do this thing. <laughs> so tie up loose ends, uh, finish business, don't let other people down. Then the other thing, the next one is use this period for personal reflection. Really look into your limiting beliefs. And if you want to work with a professional to do this, I highly recommend it. Saturn retrograde periods are great for digging into the subconscious and finding what limits might be holding us back. What beliefs might be stored in there that are preventing us from having the type of flow of goodness into our lives that we want and that we deserve? Final, finally, think about your natal Saturn. Look at the house, look at the sign, and find just a few key words about the house and the sign that you could lean into. Find ways to make peace with your Saturn, to celebrate your Saturn, build an altar to your Saturn. And metaphorically speaking, if you're not the type of person who likes to put flowers on the tables and things like that, but really get to know your Saturn's unique needs and wants. And that way, you can identify the ways in which your Saturn placement relates to the perceived limitations in your life. Knowing astrology equips us with the tools that we need to improve our lives and to move forward toward accomplishing what we came here to accomplish, what feels the most fulfilling and satisfying to us. So that is your cosmic call to action for the week. Thank you all so, so much for being here. Thank you for letting me gush about Saturn for a little while. This is important stuff and you stuck around to the end. So Saturn's going to reward you. It's going to give you lots of insights over the next few weeks. I just know it. And I look forward to hearing your feedback, to seeing what you think, and, and to seeing you next week where we will be back with a special, special guest. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.